The concept of perception and the reality it could create for someone is not often universally objective when looking at the scope of the situation and how it could affect one's life. The Saiyans are often referred to as the mightiest race in the universe with some of the most iconic and memorable warriors having to come from planet Vegeta, but what if I told you that among Goku, Vegeta, and Broly, there was another survivor. An unusually powerful child with extraordinary energy that has not yet been sharpened and used onto the surface, a tragedy used as motivation and a burning desire to seek out the truth, this is the story of my original character Raikon. Many many years ago, I created this character with a vision of one day having his story be told and now, that vision has become a reality. This is the story of survival, betrayal, evolution, redemption, carnage, and war, as we now enter the story of Raikon beyond Dragon Ball Super. As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, then be sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single upload, and if you guys love and enjoy Dragon Ball and cannot wait to see more, then be sure to go on ahead and slap a big fat like down below by giving this video a big thumbs up, along with checking out the official Dragon Ball fan manga's playlist located down in the description box below to where there you will be able to find all the latest and best Dragon Ball fan mangas created by the community for the community so be sure to take a minute to go on ahead and check that playlist out located down below as we kick off the Beyond Dragon Ball Super Raikon manga chapter number one special with the narration having to open up back during the time of Frieza's reign over planet Vegeta as the narration goes on to state the Saiyans were always known as a fierce and and combative race, always battling and always evolving, a never-ending constant in which upholds the highest of honors for those who strive to become the best they could possibly be. Unfortunately, due to the fear of the Saiyans one day overthrowing him, Frieza would have his way in annihilating planet Vegeta and all of its people with it. As we take a look back to the initial battle involving Bardock and Frieza, the narration continues, on this planet was a Saiyan unlike any other, kept hidden from King Vegeta due to his abnormal power at birth, and the fear of having him be exiled like a precious child before him known as Broly, two of the highest ranking members of the Saiyan elite had created a special child. Raikon. As we take a look at Raikon at birth having to be rushed away by his mother and father, the narration goes on to continue, his father Laxus and his mother Zuli, high-ranking warriors under King Vegeta, boarded Raikon on the last Saiyan space pod in hopes of escaping planet Vegeta after realizing Frieza was about to destroy planet Vegeta. And with Frieza moments away from destroying planet Vegeta, Raikon's mother Zuli goes on to ask Laxus, but where are are we going to send him? Surely you aren't just going to send him into deep space without a designated location. As Raikon's father Laxus goes on to reply, I don't know, but any place he goes to will be better than here. The ship's presets have already been pre-programmed to a habitable zone. There's no time for last minute changes. And with Laxus quickly boarding his young baby son on the Saiyan space pod behind them, we observe a massive supernova raining down from the heavens moments away from from colliding with planet Vegeta. As Laxus then goes on to comment, it's too late. That energy ball will end everything. As we then notice Raikon's space pod slowly begin to lift up and hover, the last thing his mother and father bear witness to is Raikon having to travel into deep space as the supernova comes crashing down, engulfing planet Vegeta as a whole, and as we take a look at Raikon's ship having to fly as quickly away from planet Vegeta as possible, inside of the Saiyan space pod for the first time, Raikon finally opens his eyes, and the first thing that this child ever witnesses is the destruction of his homeworld and everyone on it as the lasting memories of his home, his people, and his parents are now gone forever. As the narration then goes on to inform us, as Raikon quickly leaves planet Vegeta and is sent hurtling into deep space, his first glimpse of his planet after opening his eyes 
was seeing his home be destroyed as his pod drifts into outer space. Eventually, Rykon finds his way to an unknown planet and coming crashing down within the planet's ground. As the narration then continues, Rykon later lands on a remote planet called Planet Akeem, a Type 5 civilization who are better known for their intelligence and incredible technology. A quiet but advanced race to where the people there find and raise Rykon, feeding him and sheltering him all while learning of his abnormally high power. After Rykon grows older, he later rules over them as their king, but as he grows, so does his anger. Rykon became a very serious and focused warrior, always training, always evolving. When asking about his people and his world, he was informed that Frieza had destroyed planet Vegeta and all of the Saiyans that lived on that planet. As the narration then goes on to continue, Rykon not only blames and hates Frieza for killing his parents and destroying his home, but also hates his own people because he believes they were too cowardly to stand up to Frieza. He not only believes they could have stopped Frieza together, but thinks they simply chose not to. As we observe Rykon inside of a training facility, he then goes on to tell one of his assistants increase the power of the clones. And indeed, Rykon is training by battling against actual biological clones of himself. And with Rykon further demanding for the power of the clones to further be increased, one of the lead Akemian scientists that goes by the name of Jin goes on to comment in telling Rykon, Sir, taking into account their current level, that would not be a good idea, as Rykon responds by screaming at him and letting him know, I don't care! Do it now! As he then quickly gets into position, Rykon goes on to comment after reaching Super Saiyan 3, I still do not feel that I have reached my limits. I know there is something beyond it, and I will find out what now? begin. As Jin then goes on to say to himself, unless he transforms against them, the chances of winning against three full power Super Saiyan 2 clones are null. This is the fourth simulation battle within the last 12 hours, further indicating the fact that Rykon had not only been training all day, but this current training session would be the fourth within 12 hours, basically alluding to the idea that Rykon had done this three times prior. As the narration then goes on to continue, due to the Akemians having very advanced technology, Rykon trained intensely and constantly. He later discovers Super Saiyan which later he also taps into Super Saiyan 2 and even pushing himself to Super Saiyan 3. But even then, he believed there had to have been something higher than that. To in which Rykon has the philosophy that no matter what transformation he discovers, in his own personal beliefs he thinks that there's something even higher down the line. As only then we take a look at the training process itself, as the narration goes on to tell us four hours later. As we take a look inside with base Rykon having to train against three biological copies of himself, while maintaining himself in his base form against three Super Saiyan 2s, we then observe how two of the three clones are beginning to chase him from behind, not noticing that the third clone had quickly appeared in front of him and kicking Rykon directly in the ribs, which the other two clones follow by directly having to synchronize their attacks and punching Rykon directly in the face, which by the end we get to observe how Rykon Khan not only gets knocked down onto the ground, but he's also huffing and puffing and trying to regain his focus as he then goes on to state, I have surpassed my previous record. This means that I can still improve. As he then looks up, suddenly he observes something that he has not seen before. As he then goes on to state, hey, can you tell me since when is there a moon in this solar system? As only then the Akemians scream in panic and telling Rykon, No sir! You should not look at it! As Jin further goes on to yell at Rykon, Sir! You must close your eyes! As right above Rykon, we notice there is a moon. And with Rykon laying on the ground staring back up at the moon, he goes on to state, Wait, I, I, I remember, I, I remember this feeling. I can feel it, my parents, my home, as Rykon slowly but surely then begins to transform, and to the fear and shock of many of the Akemians there, Rykon slowly rises up from the ground as he begins to transform into a giant great ape. As only then the Akemians begin to cry out, this can't be happening! As they then quickly proceed to step outside the facility, they are met with the absolute horror of having to observe Great Ape Rykon in full motion. As one of the Akemians goes on to state, it can't be, his fur was never golden before, 
So what could this mean? Basically further alluding to the idea that the Akemians have seen Great Ape Rykon before, but never once have they ever seen Rykon in Great Ape form with golden fur. As Jin steps from the shadows, he goes on to tell his protege, his power is unlike anything I've ever felt before. It seems to be getting even higher. As one of the Akemian assistants cries out teacher, Jin goes on to comment, although in a state of rage, do not challenge or bring any awareness to him. It's the the root of who he is, the power of his race. Let him learn to discover his inner sanity. As Rykon is thrashing, destroying everything around his environment, Jin then goes on to continue, it was only a child the last time it was transformed. It gave us problems, but thanks to that, we already know how to control the situation. Proceed to apply the control pronto, but then suddenly he stops. Because Jin then notices something very unusual as he goes on to further confirm that they have seen Great Ape Rykon before. And and because of that, they have learned how to subdue him based on their experiences with Rykon having to transform before. But this seems a bit different, because as they're observing Rykon, we notice how Rykon is then beginning to change. There is an internal struggle within, his aura is beginning to shine, and seemingly enough, he appears to be changing. As only then Rykon is struggling to control himself, he then cries out, No! By no means no! As Jin's assistant then goes on to ask his teacher, Teacher, did you hear that? Rykon seems to be trying to control himself. And as Jin stares back up, he goes on to further tell Rykon, Do not forget! Remember who you are, Rykon! As all of a sudden, suddenly something snaps within him. As Rykon channels all of his rage, all of his anger, all of his emotions, all of his frustrations, all of his sadness, and the depth and sanity that he has within himself, the Golden Great Ape begins to emit such power that the entire planet itself begins to shake. And because of this, Jin's assistant then goes on to ask, Master, it would be a good idea to move away a little. As Jin then goes on to reply, the energy of Rykon is starting to grow abnormally. It is as if it were about to explode. Yes, yes, you're right. Taking our distance would be more convenient. As all of a sudden, a massive explosion erupts, knocking both Jin and his student away. The entire landscape is beginning to shake due to the overwhelming force of Rykon's power, as then suddenly we notice how Jin and his assistant begin to stand back up, with both the dust and the debris having to slowly settle. Jin then goes on to later state, It would seem that I'm still alive. What force? This is not like the last time when he was a child. This power of his has evolved and grown beyond our predictions. His race are an interesting species indeed. As Jin's student then goes on to ask, Teacher, are you okay? Can you hear me, sir? We seem to have survived, but it may not appear that Rykon was trying to attack us. But Jin doesn't say a word, because as they get near the edge of the crater, Jin is left utterly speechless as he then goes on to state, it would seem that he has discovered a level that goes far beyond Super Saiyan 3. But this energy, it's unlike anything he has shown off before. It's raw and very unstable. There is something very different about Rykon. The ape is gone, but down there, however, I feel something greater. Those eyes, that hair, that power. Could he have done it? Is this the power that goes beyond Super Saiyan 3? As only then, once the dust settles and once the smoke clears, we then observe Rykon's eyes, Rykon's tail, two in which at long last Rykon had finally transcended Super Saiyan 3 in discovering a new transformation, that being Super Saiyan 4. However, this isn't your standard Super Saiyan 4 transformation, as during the process of the transformation itself, there was a mutation within Rykon's body, as the narration then goes on to state, Rykon somehow managed to tap into an unknown evolution to Super Saiyan 4. There, it caused a mutation, maximizing his form with without ever losing power or stamina. This was full-powered Super Saiyan 4 evolution, which due to the overwhelming amount of S-cells that Rykon has in his body, was the end result of Rykon tapping into a power that caused it to mutate in allowing him to unlock the evolved level of a Super Saiyan 4. As only then the narration goes on to state a long time later at the Akeem Research Center. We observe how Rykon begins to wake up, he's walking around as he goes on to state, I'm bored, and now that my body has recovered, I'm I'm going to figure out how to fully maintain Super Saiyan 4 and see what other limits I could break in discovering a level even far beyond that. 
Now, time to train. Prepare the clones for another training session, he cries out. Is anyone there? As only then Rykon figures out that nobody is at the research center, and as Rykon walks around, he goes on to stumble upon one of the research rooms as he goes on to state strange. The room is empty. It seems that everyone has gone off somewhere. I can feel their energy nearby, but this room is never unintended. What is this on the screen? And with Rykon slowly beginning to approach the monitor, he goes on to state a planet. But what's so special about it that the Akemians are studying it this much? I've explored and conquered thousands of planets in this galaxy, none of which I am not aware of, but this... This planet seems to have caught their attention, but why? Surely it must be important that they've done this much research on it. Earth. Fascinating. Now, let's see why you're so special. As this is the first time that Rykon is seeing Earth on the screen, and he has absolutely no knowledge of it or who resides within it. As only then Rykon begins to dig deeper, as he finally comes across the research data of Goku and Vegeta. And with Jin and his student finally having to enter the research room, Jin goes on to tell Rykon, my lord, we were going to inform you about this when you were ready. As Rykon then goes on to ask, tell me something. If I was supposed to be the last survivor of the Saiyan race, then who are they? As Jin replies, my lord, you were the last Saiyan child to make it off of planet Vegeta's destruction. We had discovered not too long ago that there had been survivors before you who had also but then Rykon cuts him off by crying out SHUT UP! As he quickly then turns around, he begins to berate them by letting them know it doesn't matter how they survived. The point is they shouldn't have. It's scum like them who allowed Frieza to purge our world and take everything away from what we've worked so hard to create. And now you're telling me that there are more? You've been studying them, haven't you? It explains why you know so much about the Super Saiyan transformation. How long were you hiding this? How long until you were ready to tell me about them? My blood boils at the thought of cowards being able to eat and live so freely without allowing the events that took place to happen. I have slaughtered thousands for sport, but this... This is personal to me, and according to your data, they are the sons of the king, Vegeta and Bardock, the sons of cowards. As he then goes on to tell them, I need to go there. I need to find this Goku and Vegeta. Far be it for me to have to also look into finding Frieza for me as well. Soon, I will be paying him a visit after I'm done destroying these worms on Earth. And they also seem to have cut off their tails. A disrespectful act. As Jin tries to calm Rykon down, he goes on to further tell him, My lord, Frieza had been dead for quite some time now. These Saiyans on Earth, however, as you can see, are incredibly powerful. One of them even battled against the God of Destruction Beerus just a few months ago, and that is where our readings dropped off. If I may insist, they are very far away and- But Rykon quickly cuts him off, as he goes on to once again scream at him, I don't care. The data shows that they are much weaker than I am. Super Saiyan should be more than enough. As Rykon continues, he goes on to tell them, You lost the right to an explanation at the time I discovered your deception. Let me remind you that I am the ruler of this planet, and being that you kept this information hidden from me is enough to banish you from this planet, but I care about you enough not to take your life away right now, so consider yourself lucky. This will not go unchecked. As Rykon then continues, the Saiyans have devolved since their time. They've always acted, but when it was time to act on saving their race, they crumbled under the pressure. Only a handful tried, and even they were weak. As only then Rykon redirects his focus at Jin's student, he goes on to tell him, Hey you, make sure they prepare my ship. As the student answers, Yes sir, with Jin having to then reply, No Rykon, for no reason should you go to that planet. As Rykon then replies, I have already made my decision. I will not allow a subject who does not have a tail to call himself a Saiyan. They've gone unpunished for their actions for far too long, as it also appears that between these two, Goku is the strongest. So Goku we will be paying a visit to. Now let's just see what you can do, Saiyan. As only then once stepping back outside, we then get to observe Rykon's Imperial ship now having to be loaded. And with Rykon slowly approaching, he goes on to ask the Akemians, Have you finished the preparations for my ship? 
as the Achaemenes then respond, Yes sir, we have finished the preparations. With the arrangements we have made, the ship will arrive on planet Earth in just a few hours. As Rykon replies, Well done. It seems perfect. I will not wait any longer to board the ship. As once Jin steps back outside with Rykon and having to ask for him, Rykon then goes on to respond, What do you want? If you've come to try and stop me, it won't work. Let me warn you that I have already made my decision. You've kept those Saiyans hidden from me for far too long. As Jin then responds, we've kept them hidden from you because we knew that you would want to find and destroy them. Rykon, not all of the Saiyans are at fault for what had happened. These Saiyans on Earth, they aren't the reason why your planet was destroyed, sire. They even battled against Frieza at some point on Namek. I feel that I must give you an explanation. Your power is unlike anything we've ever seen before, which includes the data collected from both Goku and Vegeta. You are a rare breed. I would hope that as a teacher that I have prepped you for anything that you would face. You've surpassed all of my expectations and achieved power that no other mortal was able to achieve. We don't want to lose you, sire. As Rykon then replies to Jin, I've spent my entire life mourning my parents who gave their lives to make sure that I survived. When it was time for my people to answer the ultimate call to protect the only place we had to call home, they decided to tuck their tails between their legs and accept their fate rather than fight. They sat by and allowed everything to be destroyed. Why should the sons of those who were weak be allowed to live? Does it not bother them that our people were murdered in cold blood? I will not sit back and allow my parents' sacrifice, along with the sacrifice of the brave, to be in vain. Without you, however, I would probably be dead, and I will do anything to protect this planet and its people. You were the first and only friend that I have ever made, and for that, you have my loyalty. I have trained my entire life for this moment. I will not let this pass. I need the truth. I need to know everything. And thus, I've made my decision to go to Earth. As to the shock of Jin, Rykon then goes on to tell him, Never forget, you will always be a father figure in my life. As Jin smiles in having to tell him thank you, as Rykon then quickly responds, But don't get too excited. I'm still very angry at all of you right now. As Jin replies, I know, but it wasn't to harm you in any way, sire. However, you will not go to Earth alone. I will be joining you as you arrive there, my lord. As Rykon then goes on to ask, What? But you've never done that. Why would you want to do that? As Jin further then goes on to tell him, I will monitor your actions and I will also have to analyze those Saiyans more closely. Now, we must get on the ship. As we then observe them board the ship, Rykon then goes on to state, I can't stand waiting any longer. As one of the lead assistants goes on to then tell Rykon, we are almost done, sir. As Jin goes on to tell him, we will depart in about one hour, sire. As Rykon then comments, I see others loading up. Are you also going to come? I will not be responsible if something happens to you if it does. As the assistant goes on to further tell Rykon, yes, I will be piloting the ship. As Jin responds, I assure you, my sire, he and the others will not be getting in your way. They will not leave the ship once we arrive on Earth. As Rykon then responds, what type of armor is this? It looks different compared to the ones I have worn before. As of course Jin had now given him brand new armor, once Rykon puts it on, he goes on then to comment, it's a little weird, but it's light and comfortable. But why are you making me use this? As Jin then responds, what you have on is the armor worn by the Saiyans. They are excellent for combat. Your parents use something very similar to what you have on now. As Rykon then comments, so this is the armor that my Saiyan people wore, huh? I like it. This should be put to good use. With honor, I wear the armor of my fallen people with great pride. The blood of the strongest flows through my veins and I swear on my life that I will never perish to the weak. I will restore the ways of the mighty. As then back inside the ship, one of the pilots cries out, we are ready for takeoff. As Rykon begins to get irritated, he then goes on to comment, since you are coming, do not disturb me while we travel. As Jin reassures him, he goes on to tell Rykon, you will not be disturbed, Rykon. What do you plan to do once we arrive? 
As Raikon then goes on to answer, I am going to beat them both into the dirt until they choke on their own blood. Although this could prove to be very challenging, I am ready. I've longed for a battle that would test the limits of my power, and this could be that moment. I will show these worms what true Saiyan power is. I will get my answers. I will get my revenge on the weak. It's time for a universal paradigm shift. I've been saving a hidden power for the perfect time, and that time is now. As the Dragon Ball Super Raikon Manga Chapter Number 1 Special comes to a close. Now, just to further reassure you guys, there is going to be a Manga Chapter Number 2 Special with a sneak peek as to what is to come as you guys can see on screen. The inevitable battle which will include Super Saiyan 4 Evolution Raikon versus Super Saiyan God Goku Post Battle of Gods. Now in case you guys are wondering, for those that are genuinely curious, Raikon is not a God of Destruction. Originally, I wanted him to be or at least rock that of the God of Destruction garment, but I decided not to make him a god of destruction so whenever you see Raikon with the god of destruction garment on just know that that's not his original look or at least his look going on right now but again cool little fan art nonetheless to in which if you guys have any fan art of your own to show me or share with me you guys can go on ahead and tag me on twitter or simply join my discord in which you guys can find my discord located down below and sharing some awesome Raikon fan manga or any of the sorts in case you guys happen to do have any Raikon art now just in case you guys are also wondering the the events of this arc takes place months after the events of Goku battling Beerus in Dragon Ball Super Battle of Gods, but this is also way before Frieza's resurrection in Dragon Ball Super Resurrection of F. So sort of like in between, Goku does know Super Saiyan God and is a bit iffy by using that, but also Raikon had discovered a power that far transcends the standard power of Super Saiyan 4. Now Raikon's philosophy is the fact that he hates his own people for being cowards in not standing up against Frieza and having this warped philosophy and false conception that the Saiyans were too cowardly to rebel against Frieza which is why Raikon hates them so much along with Frieza himself. If there's anyone he can't stand more than his own people it's Frieza. As we are going to be revealing the first encounter between Raikon and Goku in the upcoming manga chapter so again if you guys are new to this channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button, slap a like on the video if you guys enjoyed and cannot wait for more. I want to thank you all so much for your patience. I want to thank you all so much for your support because this had been something so meaningful to me that I've been wanting to do for so long that I do want to go on ahead and give a big thank you to the person that helped make this happen for me, which is my good friend Alex Bach Art, who actually went out of his way to work with me side by side in developing this story, and this is only the beginning. So again, huge shout outs to him for being able to follow through with this commission and having this be done for me. Again, also big thank you to my good friend a really good friend of mine that goes by the name of raging raging 01 who did some of the coloring that you guys have seen in this video to which he also helped design the thumbnail for me in terms of his coloring so again big shout outs to my friend raging again let me know your thoughts in the comment section below guys this is only the beginning i hope you guys enjoyed tune back in for more if you guys have not shared the video share the video out on twitter facebook instagram wherever you can these are the official origins of Raikon, who he is, his power, and there's so much more to the story that I'm going to be explaining in the next couple of weeks. So again, tune back in for that. Thank you all so much for believing in me. Thank you all so much for believing in my story. Thank you all so much for accepting my character. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tune back in for more, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section, guys. Have a great day. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead. <laughs> oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs>